Bill Bailey, and this is Vertzine, the virtual magazine of virtualization and cloud computing. I say virtual magazine because it is online. It's a website, blog, and video netcast. Vertzine. I had somebody tell me one time that that was a terrible name. I don't think that's the case. I think Vertzine's a cool name, otherwise I wouldn't call it that. Virtual magazine. Vertzine. Get over it. Anyway. Just saying, if you want to have your own netcast, you name it what you want to call it. Anyway. All right, let's look at the news of this past week. This is this is a big one, I got to admit. Now, I'm a Citrix administrator, and I'm a VMware administrator, and I also do Red Hat for High Point Regional Health System in High Point, North Carolina, which is a hospital. And I, through the years, I have kept up with Citrix experts and people who really know their stuff and one of the favorite guys that I have kind of the go-to guy for tech information about Citrix is Brian Madden he has a great blog has a great website he does meetings and in and, and sessions all over the all over the country but all I started to say but also all over the world he's been all over the world but anyway Brian Madden is really the man okay well, listen to this. Brian Madden has dropped his Microsoft MVP status in protest over the VDI licensing issue that Microsoft has. In other words, Microsoft is charging in a weird way for their uh, VDI licenses, and he's kind of put up with it. Here's, as he puts it, four ways Microsoft is screwing the desktop virtualization industry and why I'm quit quitting the MVP program. This is what he says. No SPLA from the uh, Windows VDA. Okay. Number two, hosting providers aren't allowed to let two customers share the same servers or storage. What's up with that? Number three, arcane rules about on-premises devices. And number four, Microsoft won't disclose how own live licensing works. Matter of fact, I saw a later article, it may have even been from Brian Madden's blog, that said that essentially Microsoft's own live program actually violates their own licensing program. I mean, that's pretty bad when you violate your own license, you know? So they're very confused on their licensing issues. And he's so fed up with it, he's just quitting the whole MVP program. So, wow. Okay, next item here we have... This is uh, some screenshots that I saw that were really interesting about uh, VMware's vCenter Operations 5 system. This is the vCenter Operations console. And, you know, everybody is wanting to have what they call one pane of glass to be able to um, administrate vSphere or whatever software application, you know, they're, they're using basically, but in this case vSphere. And... Uh, VMware has come out with the vCenter Operations 5 system. This is the new version. And uh, this guy at 3cvguide.com, I'll put that right here, uh, he has an article, and I encourage you to go check out the article, and he's got several screenshots of the brand new console. And i got to admit, they're very impressive. I was really pleased to see what the new vCenter operations console looks like and I think it's going to be really uh, handy for administrators to be able to keep track of what's happening with their vCenter cluster so good stuff all right next item is one that I was glad to see I must admit because I have taken these videos that I produce and I've put them up in the cloud in Amazon's S3 uh, cloud site and then I've also am leveraging their CloudFront technology. Now the way CloudFront works is it actually moves the files out to endpoints around the world so that when people access a video, let's say somebody in Singapore accesses this particular netcast, it would come from a local server to them and come much faster and download much smoother and faster to them. That's a great feature. And it's a really neat service and it works very well. Well, recently Amazon lowered their prices, which is good for people like me that are doing it on a budget. Well, they just announced this week they're lowering their prices yet again. That's very quick succession that they're lowering their prices. Now check this out. It says this is good news and this is what I'm saying. 
Uh, good news to those including me that use Amazon's S3 CloudFront and other cloud services. They're committed to bringing good value to their customers and I've been very happy with my experience with them. And then the article that I quote here, or actually the Amazon uh, press release, says, once again Amazon Web Services has said it's cutting the price of their cloud offerings. This is uh, an article about their press release, I'm sorry. Including its Elastic Compute Cloud EC2 Relational Database Service RDS and the Elastic MapReduce EMR offerings. The latest reduction marks the 19th time, now think about this, the 19th time that Amazon has cut prices on its cloud services in the six years since they launched them. Now that's impressive. And the neat thing about it is, the more they drop their prices, the more people start using the service. The more people use their service, the more sales they make, and they make more money. I mean, it just works well, and I'm really encouraged that they're taking that approach. They're really trying to bring it down for the little guy, so to speak, to be able to use cloud services, which is great. All right, last item this week. Verizon provides Wi-Fi hotspot with the new 4G iPad. Uh, so apparently there is a 4G version. <laughs> On the handheld hack episode that I recorded just prior to this, I was talking about what? There's only a 3G iPad? Well, apparently there is also a 4G version because Verizon at least will have a 4G and it will provide a Wi-Fi hotspot. So good news there, I guess. But anyway, the mobile hotspot will be included. Now this is the part that really caught my attention. It'll be included in their 4G LTE data plan for the new iPad. Uh, so in other words, you won't have to pay extra. Now it may be that their data plan costs more than the old data plan. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't give a tremendous amount of details here. Uh, but at any rate, at least they're including it. And I think that's going to be a big deal because I hope people will start competing with that and that will become uh, fairly uh, ubiquitous that people include this Wi-Fi service. I mean, why add another $20, $30 a month to a service just because you want to use it for a Wi-Fi hotspot? So, eh, that's just me. But anyway, that's Vertzine for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember, until next time, to keep your head in the clouds.